Lesson number 98 is about the distance between two points and the slope formula. Now our first question says, find the distance between the points whose coordinates are given. Now these points are 4, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2. Here's our first point. And our second point is negative 3 and negative 2, our second point. Now in order to find the straight line distance between that, those two points, and let's draw what that would look like, the straight line distance here, well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem that we just learned about in order to solve this. Let's go ahead and make a triangle. If we make a triangle, it's going to have our vertical side and our horizontal side, and we can easily figure out what those values are going to be. Here, we've got a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 from this point over to our right angle. So this is 7. And then going up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 units. So in order to find out what our distance is, we've got 4 squared plus 7 squared is going to equal, and we'll call it c squared, because this is our hypotenuse, our long side across opposite the right angle. 4 squared is 16. 7 squared is 49. That's all going to equal c squared c squared, when we simplify, 16 plus 49, that's going to equal 65. And if we look at 65, we have to think about whether that can be broken down or whether we're going to leave it just as it is. Now, we need to take the square root of both sides, so the square root of 65 is going to equal c. And the square root of 65, that cannot be broken down to be any more simple. So, we've got our final answer. Our distance is the square root of 65. We don't want to simplify that to our decimal because we'd lose precision because we would have to round our decimal. We want to leave it just like this. Now let's look at our next one. Find the distance between these points. We have 3 and negative 4. And we have negative 5 and positive 2. So if we want to find the distance between these points, Let's draw out what that would look like. We'll use red this time, and it's going to be right here. Now this time, let's go ahead and make our triangle going up. In our last example, we drew our triangle on the bottom side. This time, we'll draw our triangle going up vertically, and then across horizontally. And we can figure out the same thing. So, our distances. Our distance is going across. Well, from our left point to our right angle, we must have a total of 8 units. And then going down, we must have a total, we've got 2, and we know we have negative 4 more, this must be 6 units. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 6 squared is 36 plus 8 squared is 64, that's all going to equal c squared. Well this is a nice one because we get 100 equals c squared. We know we have to take the square root of both sides to undo the square. So the square root of 100 equals c. And the square root of 100, that's a nice one, that's 10. So 10 is equal to c. And we've got our final answer. So 10 goes here. Now, this is one of our Pythagorean triples. If you look at your notes, you won't see this one exactly. But what you'll see is this, 3, 4, and 5. And notice how those are in the same proportion. 3, 4, 5. If we double all those numbers, we get 6, 8, 10. And Pythagorean triples will always work in proportions like that. So if we double them, it stays the same. If we triple them, it stays the same. They're always in that proportion. Now the second part of our lesson today is a little bit different. This one says, Find the slope of the line that passes through these points. We have negative 3, 4. And one way to do this is to graph. So we have negative 3 and positive 4. Then we have 5 and negative 2. Let's go ahead and draw a line that goes straight through these points. So we'll use our diagonal tool. And it looks like we're going to get something just like this. Now notice where I put the line makes a big difference. If I put it on this, it will cross through several points on the grid. 
And if I put it like this, it crosses through slightly different points on the grid. So figuring out exactly where to go for your slope can be challenging, unless you go figure out how many you go across, how many you go down. But remember, slope equals the rise over the run. So the rise comes first. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this one, since we're reading from left to right, we actually go down six, and our run is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So down six over eight, which equals negative three-fourths. Then we'd have our final answer for our slope here. Now, this is nice when you have a coordinate plane to work with or graph paper. There's another way to solve this. What we can do is to say the slope equals the rise over the run, which really equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And if we apply this formula, we can get this same answer. Let's look at how we'd apply it. Here's x1 comma y1. And that comma is not very good. I'm going to erase that comma. We're going to get x1 y1 x2, y2, because this coordinate pair comes first, and this coordinate pair comes second. So our formula says y2 minus y1. So that's going to be negative 2 minus 4. And then x2, which is 5, minus x1. x1, that's negative 3. So when we solve this, we're going to get negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 over 5 plus 3, that's 8. And that's going to be the same thing, negative 3 fourths. So you can use either method for this type of problem, graphing and finding the rise over the run. Remember, it's downhill from left to right, so it's a negative number. Or we can use this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's look at one more example like this. Here we want to find the slope of the line that passes through these points. We're not going to use a graph this time because we've solved several problems like that already in the past. So let's use our formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In this one, let's write out what everything is. We have x1, y1, because this is our first coordinate pair. We have x2 y2, because this is our second coordinate pair. So when we apply that formula, y2 is negative 4 minus y1, which is 2. x2 is 2 minus x1, which is 1. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6 over 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get negative 6 over 1, which is just equal to negative 6 there's our slope. Our slope, m, is equal to negative 6. We could have done this with a graph, but we don't always need it. Sometimes we can just use this formula, the change in y, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, over the change in x, x sub 2 minus x sub 1, in order to find our slope. Our lesson practice will be on page 415. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.